Hey, what's up? John from VideoFort.com bringing you a new After Effects tutorial. This one is a follow-up to our expressions, particle, trigonometry, crazy uh, one where we learned how to do this cool little multicolor spiral here. Pretty fun effect. Today, we're going to learn how to place a logo in there and uh, create something kind of like this. Wowie zowie. So, uh, that looks like a bunch of multicolor rainbow rific fun. Let's uh, just dive right into it. So, we've got our uh, particles here, and they just uh, go across the screen following the expression that we've set up. Uh, here's our expression, and we're actually going to alter this a little bit. So uh, I've renamed our adjustment layer to speed control, and actually we're just going to name this particle control because it's controlling the particles. So particle control, and uh, that's what we're naming that. Now down in our expression, we're going to alter this a little bit. So we're actually going to take out the Y frequency and Y amplitude controls. So just delete those all together. And that's going to give you this bad argument warning. Don't worry about that. Not a big deal. And then we're also going to change the names here to amp and freak frequency. So uh, now we just took out the X's. So if we go down into our expression, we're just going to take out the X in X frequency and the X in X amplitude down in our expression. Remember I taught you guys about reading, you know, left and right, up and down, taking words to form sentences. Tylenol for headaches, might all for cramps. Um, yeah, so just read this and, you know, as we go through here, math.sign, that's, you know, the sine trigonomic function that we talked about where it starts at zero, goes up to positive one, then down to negative one, and then re-intersects at zero uh, each time. And then you've got the cosine function for y, where it starts at a positive one, then goes down through zero to negative one and back up. I know this doesn't make any sense with the uh, mouse motions because we don't have a graph, but just trust me on this one. All right, so uh, just read across this, and it's telling you, you know, this comp layer is going to the particle control up here. And, uh, oh, look, we don't have a Y frequency up there, but we do have a regular frequency, FREQ. It's telling you to go to that one. See, reading's not so bad. But uh, sorry for that diet tribe. All right, and we're just going to relink the expression. So make sure that that got put back on. And wow, our expression is back to normal. So something kind of cool to uh, note, if we go back to particle control, we can start changing our amplitude here so we can make it bigger or smaller as we want. And we can see that change real time, which is kind of nice. Same thing with frequency. We can you know, create more spirals or less spirals as we please. So, And then uh, z-speed is going to extend out our particles or bunch them in more. So now that we're all back and up to speed and aware of everything that that has to offer, let's drop in a logo. So we're going to go into our project and just grab our uh, multicolor video fort logo. And then we can just drop it right into our comp there. But it is invisible. Vi. Let's uh, go ahead and turn on our 3D layer, and that'll allow the lights to hit it. That's why it was invisible. See, it, a 2D, it's a 2D object, so it's not interacting with our emitter here. Remember, this is a light. So if we make it a 3D object, it'll bring it into view which is what we want. Let's go ahead and press V on our keyboard and we can start repositioning it. I'm going to reposition it so that it starts right over here at the beginning of our particles. And maybe push it down just a little bit. And I'll bring it back up. I want it to be about center. All right, that looks uh, good enough to me. So uh, if we bring it to the beginning, we can kind of start to see how that works. But, uh, Look at that, our particles don't pass in front of and behind it, and our uh, logo's flashing. So how do we make our particles interact with our logo? Well, we are going to select our particle, 
and we're going to put it up top because when we do this we uh, just need to make sure that there aren't any 2D layers getting in the way of it. That doesn't make any sense right now, but trust me. So and we'll select our particle layer and we'll go into its effects controls and go all the way down to visibility and go to obscuration layer, obscuration layer, obscuration, obs, okay. And we're gonna choose our multicolor video for it logo as the obscuration, obscuration layer. And uh, now we should get it passing in front of. See that? Oh my God, beauty! That's uh, that's what we wanted. I'm so happy. So that completes today's. Oh wait, no, we still got plenty more. So uh, let's we'll start repositioning this logo a little bit more. I'm gonna make it larger first off. Everybody likes it when it's bigger. So I press S on the keyboard to bring up the scale, and we're just gonna scale this right on up. Make it big. Oh yeah, videofort.com. Bringing you the coolest videos around. So uh, we got it much larger up on the screen there. It looks nice. It's just like, you know, sometimes you can only ask for so much in life, and when it just works, oh, it's beautiful. And uh, that's pretty much it. So right around here, we want our particles to start dying off. So I'm going to go here and grab our particles and check out where it says particle life. We're going to set a keyframe here. Then I'm simply just going to continue moving forward until we get to that point where we wanted them to die. And uh, I'm just going to bring it down to zero. And that should set another keyframe. If we select particular, our particular layer, and press U on our keyboard, that'll show us all the keyframes that we've set for it, which would be only those two. And we can kind of scrub through and see that they die off. So that's awesome. So now I don't really like that this is flashing as our particles go around it. That's kind of annoying to me. The reason why it's doing that is because the light's passing in front of and then behind our logo. Uh, so to fix this, we're just going to add another light. So if we go up to Layer, New, Light, and we are going to make it a spotlight. Now we could also do ambient light or parallel light, but uh, if we do spotlight, we can make a few more adjustments and make it like a real feel. Ambient light will just kind of light everything, and you know, it's, it's a good convenient light, but I want it to be spot because we can control it slightly more. So now you know. And I'm just going to adjust where the spotlight's pointed. And this is what I was talking about with the spotlight, so I can actually pull this back and brighten up more of my logo, or I can push it in forward and kind of vignette my logo to give it more of a, a feel, or you know, something like that. And that way, it's uh, always lighting, you know, one point of my project. And uh, the only problem with that is at the end we lose a lot of that. So I probably want to pull it back so that we can actually see our full logo. Maybe not that far. So yeah, but you can play with that and get it to where you want it. You can also go into its controls and change its different settings. So you can bring down its intensity or bring it up should you need to be more intense you can also spread out the uh, cone angle so that it's covering more or less. I put it at like a hundred. That should be pretty good. And I'm also going to bring down that intensity back to a hundred because I don't want it that bright. And I'm just going to bring back the Z distance. So another thing you can do is see where it says front here. 
We can also go to active camera, which right now we don't have a camera, so that doesn't do anything. We can also go to top view. And this is like a top view of our uh, comp. And if we pull back a little bit, this is our light here. And we can actually adjust our light so that it's, you know, however we want it. And I can also you know, pull back, which is sweet. You can see our particles here. We can actually reposition our logo so it's slightly more centered in there. So I'm going to push that back in Z space just a little bit. And now it's going to line it up slightly better. And now we can just go back to front view. And you can see, oh my goodness, that's just perfect. So now let's focus on these particles. Um, I kind of want them to Oh, looks like we probably pushed that back slightly too far, didn't we? Let me just go back to top view and bring them back. So right there should be good. There we go. Now they're going back behind. Awesome. Move. So let's uh, focus on these particles. We're going to turn them into a straight line so that it's not so broken up and choppy. So if we sec select our particular layer, we are going to go to where it says life random. We're going to make that zero. Now that's going to straighten out our line quite a bit there. Then if we go to where it says opacity random, we're going to make that zero as well. And that's straightening it out even more. How about size random? We want them all the same size, so we're going to make that zero. Boom. Are you impressed? Probably not. You guys are probably like, no, I already do that. Well, then you are advanced. So yeah, we got uh, you know, our basic little animation here. So if I uh, hit play, we can watch this slowly preview. And I'm going to bring this down to like a third. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much the basic of our animation right now. So what I'll do next is put a mask over our video for it logo and I'm going to animate the mask to reveal the video for it as the light passes through. You know, it's pretty easy, straightforward. You guys should all know how to mask. If you don't, stay with me because you're going to learn how to. So I grabbed uh, the square tool and then I selected my multicolor logo and whoa, I cannot see anything because it is trying to render it. And that's fine. Uh, I'm going to bring this up to like fuller resolution because I want to be able to see. And I'm going to move this mask so that it's over my video fort logo. Sweet, that looks about right. Now I'm going to go to the very beginning of our animation comp thing. I'm going to drop down my mask settings and grab my select tool. I'm going to extend this mask on this side just a hair. Probably right about there. There. That looks good to me. And I'm also going to bring this side over all the way. And if I hold down the shift key, it'll keep it in line so uh, it won't move all over the place on me. And I'm going to put it right here. So. Let's also crank up the feather. And that's just going to do something pretty cool for us. It'll uh, make it so that it's not such a hard edge when it's going across. And uh, it'll look like it's more of the light drawing on to our logo than just a mask revealing it. Really dynamic stuff you guys are learning here. I mean, super advanced techniques. 
And instead of like going through and trying to figure all of that out, I'm just going to go all the way to the end of my animation, probably about here, and just uh, click on my mask. Hold down my shift key as I do this. Keep that in mind. And that seems pretty good to me. So then I'm just going to go to the middle. And look at that. I'm just going to go through and click to make sure that it's not revealing before the light gets to there. And that looks pretty nice. So uh, let's go ahead and play this back. I'll go down to a third. I'll render it a little quicker for you guys so you don't have to wait on me. And yeah, so now we've got our mask revealing, and it's almost as if the light is spiraling around it to paint it. It's just a magical moment. Uh, yeah. So some other cool modifications that you can do would be, you know, let's go in time a little bit. We can play with our Z slider control, so we can make it, you know, get to places faster. We can also shorten it up. Now if you do that, you're going to have to alter your mask a little bit. So those are just some cool changes that you can make there. Uh, you can also play with the amplitude, so you can make them um, smaller or bigger. Make them giant. And once again, if you start altering the amplitude, you're going to have to also alter the Z speed so that the light will kind of keep up with what you're trying to do. Another fun one that you can play with would be the frequency. And if you do a higher frequency, that's going to break up your line a little bit. And, uh, you know, if you like that cool particle look, then keep it. If you don't, then, you know, readjust it. You can go into your particles and adjust those as well. You can make your particle life longer. So that'll just keep them around for a way longer time. You can also increase or decrease the size of them. And this will just give you, you know, different looks and feels. If you increase it real big, you know, you won't have as big of a problem uh, on the particles being tiny. But yeah, so play around with it. Show us what you can come up with. This is uh, pretty much what I had come up with quick, fast little intro or outro, however you want to see it. Make sure to head on over to videofort.com. Check out some of our super stock footage over there. You'll find some really cool things to play around with and edit. And also click on subscribe. We love keep, keeping you guys up to date with brand new tutorials and the best way to do that is by subscribing to our channel so that you'll just get pinged every time a new one comes out, which uh, we know you guys want to happen. So that'd be sweet. And also, guys, remember, have a great day. Or not. The choice is yours. Later, guys.